So this is Chinese sumac. I've got two halves of a log and I have all the botanical keys to make positive identification possible. I prepared this other half with a portion of it covered with varnish to accentuate some of the botanical features. I also have the bark of the tree. I've got the twigs of the tree and different sizes, a whole bunch of them. I've got leaf stalks and I've got seeds with, with seedlings in it to make positive identification absolutely certain. Alright, so I have every part of the tree including the roots. So that's gonna be how it's listed in this book, Chinese Sumac. And it is called uh, Tree of Heaven because of it, uh, because of its aggressive growth. Let me just put these back in the Ziploc before the evidence gets blown away here by the breeze. Just give me two seconds here. Okay, so this identification is not relying exclusively on features in the wood grain. So, if you look at it, the pith, these are botanical features now, the pith is continuous. I split it there, it's drying, it's a continuous pith with no uh, membranes going across it anywhere. It's a continuous pith, it's soft and squishy, all right? The log is still drying, it's been cut down recently. Uh, let's start with the edge green, or oh, sorry, end green here. Uh, other than the huge uh, distance between growth rings, yeah, this is definitely a ring porous tree that grew up here with periods of uh, winter clearly marked. What's visible on this one <coughs> is that it's got white rays okay the rays are white on it and i'm going to show you how they look like on uh, on ed on edge grain you can still see white uh, rays on it and the pores or the vessel elements are quite small i'm gonna have better shots than this but they are quite small and only some of them are open and no this is not clogged up with sawdust this is this has been meticulously prepared for identifying wood species and and only some of the grains are open on my slice i prepared you can only you, you'll see that it's possible to see through some of those larger vessel elements uh, light will be coming through them, but but only uh, but only some of them are open. The rest of them are closed off with a membrane. That's how the bark looks like, or the transition to the bark with a couple of larger vessel elements, and uh, and it's got this orangey color to it in patches like I don't know Garfield orange whatever name you want to describe it with and it's cardboard colored closer to the pith like so uh, maybe a layer of green there this orangey there but it's not even everywhere like no coloration on that part of the sapwood uh, color there a different color there so and the the heartwood and the sapwood don't really uh, separate sharply here at the varnished corner you can see the similar similar features now this is how this is the edge grain here this is how the rays look like the white rays still have this smeary or smeared look and you can see the orangey wash coming around and going down here consistently this is the cardboard cardboard colored brown part and it's a layer of this orangey color so that's how the rays look like edge green
and on face grain this is how stuff looks like straight grain the wood is heavy it's not dry enough for me to weigh it so I really can't have a number on it the cambium looks green here and uh, and the bark is that thick and it's got this purplish wash to it with the uh, urethane on it and without the urethane not so much there you can see some larger vessel elements there towards the there at where the cambium and the bark meet so it's uh, definitely ring porous and it's closed grain for sure so that's how this looks like Chinese sumac I prepared this thin slice for uh, microscopic shots and uh, you can see on it in this position that light comes through some of the vessel elements but most of them light doesn't go through that again it's not because it's clogged up with sawdust but this is a closed grain wood species so let's look at it under a microscope so equipment wise just very briefly the digital microscope has 10 power 60 power and 200 power settings so I'm gonna have three consecutive shots all in under a minute and uh, not a lot of talking actually it's gonna be just set on mute and uh, you're gonna see the end grain with these three magnifications